class, we are going to start the solving unit. So we're going to start off by finding zero. So remember on a graph, zeros are what are the x-intercepts. It's where the graph crosses the x-axis. Um, algebraically is what we're going to start off. It's where the function equals zero. So we're going to set our f of x equal to zero. So we have zero is 2x minus 3 over 7, and we're just going to solve for the values of x. So I'm going to just do algebra, multiply both sides, 0 times 7 is 0, is 2x minus 3, add 3 to both sides, and we have 3 equals 2x, divide both sides by 2, and x is 3 over 2. So we can of course check, and when we plug this in, we're going to find f of 3 over 2, and we have to verify that we get a 0 out. So I'm going to plug in my x into my original equation. So I have my x is 3 over 2, so I'm going to plug that in. So my 2's cancel, 3 minus 3 over 7, and that is 0. So we did in fact get a 0 out. So we found zeros. So we're going to go through and we're going to be solving equations and we're going to be finding the zeros. Let's move on. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the domain. The domain of function is the valid inputs. Um, for this first function, it has an implied domain because our domain um, excludes certain values. We cannot divide by zero. So for this problem, since we cannot divide by zero, we have to exclude um, x equals negative 1. So the domain would be all real numbers except x equals negative 1 because the denominator x plus 1 cannot equal 0. Or in other words, x cannot equal negative 1. So our domain in words, we'd say all real numbers except x equals negative 1. Um, remember, we can also write all real numbers, and we could say minus the set x equals 1. Okay, so we're going to use different notations. Using interval notation, which we have also talked about, it's minus infinity to minus 1, round bracket, uh, sorry, I see that I wrote x equals positive 1 up here. I meant to write x equals negative 1. Um, so it's negative infinity to negative 1. It's a round bracket at negative 1. This doesn't include negative 1. Union, negative 1 to infinity. So this is all real numbers except x equals negative 1. Okay, um, problem number 3. We're going to find the domain of the square root function. So for square roots, um, the domain is going to exclude when we take square roots of negative numbers. So the, here, the domain of all square roots excludes um, square rooting negative numbers. Now remember, the square root of 0 is 0, so that's still OK. So here, um, for our domain, we know everything underneath the square root, 4 minus x squared, has to be greater than or equal to 0. These are the good values of x. It has to be bigger than or equal to 0, because we can take the square root of 0. So if I add x squared to both sides, I get 4 is bigger than or equal to x squared. Okay, so we're going to translate that. This tells me that x squared has to be less than 4. So the numbers, I can plug in, say, 0 and square that, and this is less than 4, 1, and square that, or 2, and if I square 2, I get equal to 4. Um, but I can also plug in the negative numbers, like negative 1 and negative 2. So this translate is that x is any number between negative 2 and 2. And if you go back to here, it's 4 minus some number. This x squared has to be 4 or smaller because 4 minus 4 would be okay. But if I plug in x equals 3, for example, 4 minus 3 squared or 9, that makes a negative number. So I need this number to be between negative 2 and 2, otherwise this number here will be bigger than that 4. Okay. Okay, so problem number four, we're going to find the domain. It's a very similar problem, but underneath um, is written differently. So I have x squared minus four. So for this one, um, x squared minus four has to also be greater than or equal to zero, or x squared is bigger than or equal to four. 
So this is differently. So this tells me that x can't be less than 4, which means it's the opposite of the previous problem. This tells me that my x has to be bigger than 2, or my x has to be less than or equal to negative 2. Okay, so let's look at the problem. Any number's bigger than 2. So if I plug in 3, that's good, because I get like 9 minus 4. I can take the square root of that. Um, but if I plug in, say, 1, if I plug in 1, I have 1 squared minus 4, and I'm taking the square root of a negative number. We're not taking the square root of negative numbers for real numbers. So I have my number can be 2, or negative 2, because I square those, and I end up with 0 underneath. But if these numbers are too small, then I end up with a negative number. Okay, so that is domain. So we are going to be looking for when what the domain excludes, and it mostly involves fractions, because we can't divide by zero, or square roots, um, where we can't take the square root of negative numbers. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so here we're going to be evaluating piecewise functions. So our piecewise functions, this has two pieces, and here we have domains restricted. So we're going to look at the first piece, when our x is a number less than 0, and we're going to look at the second piece when our x, our domain, is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so for this first one, we have x is negative 2. So you have to check, is that number less than 0, or is that number greater than or equal to 0? Well, it's the first scenario. Negative 2 is an x less than 0, so we're going to plug it into the first piece. So our k of negative 2 is 3 times negative 2 minus 4, or negative 6 minus 4, which is negative 10. Okay, number 2, we have x equals 0. So our x equals 0 falls into the second category, because it's or equal to. So our k of 0 is 3 times 0 plus 1, or 1. x equals 2. Okay, which domain? Is that a number less than 0 or greater than or equal to 0? It's greater than or equal to 0. So k of 2 is 3 times 2 plus 1, or 7. So we're evaluating piecewise functions. So you only plug it into either piece, the piece that fits the domain requirement. And that's what we're going to do for piecewise functions. The last topic tonight is talking about what's called a difference quotient. And up here we have one of the basic definitions of calculus, which is the ratio of a difference quotient. Difference meaning subtraction, quotient meaning we're dividing. Okay, so the difference quotient is something that you'll be given in the problem. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and simplify it. So we have this first part, f of x plus h. Okay, so we need to find f of x plus h, so f of x plus h. Well, my input is this x plus h bit, so that's what I'm going to replace with x. That's my input. It's kind of like how we just evaluated, we plugged in 2, but instead of plugging 2 in, like f of 2, we're plugging in x plus h. Okay, so we're going to find that, so we just replace it. So it's 2 times x plus h minus 3. That's f of x plus h. So that's this first part of the difference quotient. And then we're going to subtract off f of x, which is what we were given, f of x, and we're going to divide by h. So our difference quotient. Okay, so um, I'm just going to write difference quotient. It's f of x plus h, which is what we just found. So that's 2 times x plus h quantity minus 3. And we're going to subtract off f of x which is the function that we were given, and I have to subtract all of it, so I need to make sure I have parentheses, 2x minus 3. Okay, so this first part was what I'm going to highlight in yellow. Okay, so that's f of x plus h, and then I'm going to subtract off f of x, which was what was given to us, which is this part over here, and then finally what I'm asked to do is divide by h. So now all we have to do is simplify. So we're going to distribute the 2, we're going to distribute the negative. So I have 2x plus 2h minus 3 minus 2x plus 3 all over h. My 2x's go away, my negative 3 and my 3 go away, so I have 2h over h, which is just 2. 
and you will notice that the difference questions will simplify a lot. So let's move on to the next problem. Okay, so here is the next difference question that we are working on. Um, so we're given a new difference question and a new function. Um, so let's start off by finding g of a plus h. So g of a plus h here is what we're going to start off with. So a plus h is what we're going to plug in um, to our function, and that's going to require a lot of algebra. So we have g of a plus h. So wherever I saw my x, I'm going to plug in a plus h of a plus h squared minus 5 times a plus h plus 7. So I just replace x with a plus h, because that's what my input is. So a plus h squared is a plus h times a plus h. I'm going to distribute this, so I have minus 5a minus 5h plus 7. I'm going to use FOIL, a squared plus 2ah plus h squared minus 5a minus 5h plus 7. So all of that is g of a plus h, which is the first bit. So then we're going to go on to find the second bit, which is g of a. So we're going to find g of a next. Um, g of a is algebraically much more simple. Um, so my input now is just a, so I'm going to replace x with a. So it's a squared minus 5a plus 7. So now I'm ready to put everything into my difference quotient. So I have g of a plus h, which is my yellow, which is this long string, string a squared plus 2ah plus h squared minus 5a minus 5h plus 7. And I'm going to, in my difference question, subtract g of a, which is the blue bit, and I'm going to subtract all of it, so I always need my parentheses here. Okay, so I have my yellow, which is the long one, minus this blue. I'm going to divide it by h, and I'm just going to do a little bit of highlighting here. Um, so this is my blue bit, and then my yellow bit is my g of a plus h, which is that. Um, and so now all I need to do is simplify. So I'm going to distribute my negative. So I have a squared plus 2ah plus h squared minus 5a minus 5h plus 7 minus a squared plus 5a minus 7 all over h. And now here's where the magic canceling occurs. So let's see what is going to cancel. So we have an a squared. It's going to cancel with an a squared. We have a minus 5a canceling with a plus 5a. We have a plus 7 canceling with a minus 7. So we just have three terms left on the top. So we have 2ah plus h squared minus 5h all over h. And since all terms have an h in it, the h cancels with the h and the h. Okay, so if all three on the top cancels, so we have 2a plus h minus 5. So it did cancel a lot. It didn't cancel down like it did the, for the previous one where all those terms canceled out, but a lot canceled out. So let's move on to the next one where we have a new term. Um, for this last problem, we have a, a new variable called delta x. Okay, so it's a Greek letter delta. Think of it just as an a. Okay, so here's my function. We're going to find k of x plus delta x. So k of x plus delta x. It's not two things, it's just like one variable there. Okay, so it's 4 plus 5. So I'm going to replace x with x plus delta x. Think of delta x as y. Okay, so I'm just going to distribute. So this is 4 plus 5x plus 5 delta x. And then I'm going to subtract off and divide by delta x. So I'm going to put it all into my difference quotient now. So k of x plus delta x is 4 plus 5x plus 5 delta x. I'm going to subtract off k of x, which is my function, 4 plus 5x. And then I'm going to divide by delta x. Distribute and cancel. 4 plus 5x plus 5 delta x minus 4 minus 5x all over delta x. The 5x's cancel, the 4's cancel, and we have 5 delta x over delta x. The delta x's cancel, and we are left with 5, and we are done. So everything cancels out. Delta x is a variable. Think of it as y. Think of it as a happy face. Think of it as a 2, but it's a delta x, one thing together. So that is all. You have a great night. I will see you in class.